So, the group proceeds forward. Yep. All right. Do you find anything? Oh, yeah, we found uh, there was a gravestone with some kind yes. of markings on it that neither, neither of us could read. Pull out the paper. It was just a rock. Nothing too interesting. I mean, there is a snowflake that might have glowed at one point, but I don't know if that signifies anything. So can any of us actually read that? Do uh, any of you? I, I do actually have reindeer on my language list. Hey, there we go. You might be with the wand, yeah. Well, Gino, you recognize the writing. It's, it's very sloppily sp- written, but... It's, uh... Yes, that's, that's because I don't speak reindeer. <laughs> your your, but, your it, hoof writing is terrible. But it, essentially, it says, in essence, here lies our beloved prince. May he rest, may he rest forevermore. No name, oh, no just name the is. prince. Nope. Finger prince. <laughs> no. Reindeer just buried a prince there, that's kind of odd. It is an odd place for a burial. For someone of importance, at least. Perhaps it is where he died. Princes do often fall into battle and whatnot. Do they? Well, in the stories, please. Note, note to self, don't become a prince. Got it. <laughs> yeah. It's a health hazard. Just don't be a, a prince in high places. You'll be fine. <laughs> the... Be a prince in the low places. Yeah. Clap, clap, clap. That doesn't, that doesn't oh. sound better. I don't think elevation affects your chance of survival. Well, it does for fall damage. <laughs> that's a very that's a very isolated case. So, uh, you said princes fall to their deaths a lot. So oh, onward then. Only in Disney, Disney films. Apparently, right, yeah, I'm, I'm moving. I'm moving on. Yes. Yeah. All right. The rest of the path is steep going, and it appears the weather has indeed sort of taken a turn, a surprising turn, to the south. Uh, Gino, give me a nature check, would you? Yes. What if I want to make a nature check? Um. Not allowed. I'm I'm like a druid in training. Got some great rolls going today. You know what? I'll give it to you with disadvantage. Oh, is this a druid thing? Yes. Okay. I will remain blissfully unaware then. Oh, that's uh, that's. Uh, 11. 11. Okay. I rolled higher, though! Hooray! Oh! <laughs> two, twos are very great. Yeah, the, yeah, the uh, the weather is, the weather is indeed taking a nasty turn for the worst. And, uh, while it's not fully expected, freak storms aren't exactly unheard of, so it appears you guys just got hit with a bit of bad luck. The path continues up, and it just keeps going up, and up, and up. And it's just unrelenting in its progress. And eventually it sort of levels out, and all of a sudden you stop as you find yourself at the edge of a ravine. Like, just kind of goes straight down. On the other side, it looks like it might continue. How far across is it? Um. Well, let me count something. About six squares. Well, I guess 30 feet if you wanted to use that bit. Too far to jump, but not terribly distant. Only I took the the tiger, the tiger totem. Do we have any rope? We we have some tied to us. Yes, we have rope. Okay. Do we have do we have rope that isn't in use? Let me try. Let me try. Ask, ask I I also one. have rope. Okay. I, I, wait, have rope. Who, whose well, rope are we using? Bees. Okay. Because, then yes, because remember, have. we have we have two people who could fly. That as well. We could just ferry everyone over. Uh, Clearly, the it, flying it, ones it, need to make a rope bridge across for the rest of us. I will remind you. Clearly, we need to be put into the rope trick. <laughs> yes. I will remind you. I have five strength. Oh. I'm not carrying anyone across. 
I still don't understand how you got so low on your strength. Like how, how you? I rolled a three. I rolled a three and three ones. Oh, okay. How deep is this ravine? I had to, I had to put them somewhere. It appears to go down pretty far. Uh, if one had to again use the imperial system, probably a good hundred, hundred fifty feet. Pup lengths? Yes. So yes, about a hundred, hundred fifty pup lengths, shall we say? Um. So yeah. it's a it's a don't fall down at ravine. Yes. Pretty much. Honestly, most are. Um, does it look like there's anything on the other side that we could secure a rope to? Give me a perception check. I just realized that no, I was gonna, thinking... I'm going to look for that I, as well. I was thinking to myself, aren't I the strongest in the party? And I was like, no, it's B. Is it? Yes, because she, she has the strength gloves normally, right? Does she have it now? No. Oh, she has the cloak instead. Jeez, these rolls today. That, oh, that was me man. last uh, Oh, are we doing perception? We're Just looking for places to tie rope. It's too uh, snowy. I'm out of my element. It's <laughs> a good oh, thing no. you had advantage. <laughs> You're, uh... Uh, yes. Zao, it appears there... And B, it does appear that there would be a good place to anchor rope to. On both ends for that measure. And hammer, failing that. And a tan, which probably has pins with it. So, could our long my fly a rope across and secure, secure it on the other side? That so. does appear. That does appear to be a fe uh, feasible to do. Yes. All right, let's do it. And we can secure this end. Well, I'm not going to have you guys roll for uh, getting across it safely. We'll say after a, a bit of time, a bit of effort, and um, a little nerve-wracking, what with the wind picking up and the whatnot, but you guys do manage to all more or less make it across safely. Don't look down. I imagine maybe one or two of you have lost a couple years of your life. From the, from nerves, but you know it's cool. Uh, most of us have a lot of those years. Most. Of <laughs> <laughs> most of us can stand to lose a few nerves. Except for yeah, B. nerves. Uh, B B just flat out dies from this. B no. Oh. No, we need you. I'm sure B will be fine. I'll have to put another tombstone beside the first. <laughs> All right. I mean, you guys... Poppy doesn't mind because she's part... she's got eagle powers. She can't guys... fly, but she doesn't. She isn't scared. <laughs> can't fly, but surprisingly comfortable in the air. Yes. It's like she's she's actually uh, she's actually the cousin of catapult cow. <laughs> she just moves so, but... a lot slower. <laughs> well, yeah, because she doesn't find a catapult. Right? Well, Our she is fat. Have catapults she's... been invented in this version of Phono? Um, no. Such a such sophisticated uh, machinery doesn't exist, nor is there any reason for it to exist because there's no fortresses. Maybe yeah, I don't, just, I don't think, I don't maybe think just anyone a big the, slingshot. I don't, I don't think anyone who would have the capacity would have the desire to siege another town. Uh, oh, but by the way, down at the bottom of the ravine appears to be a shortcut. Or at least so, yeah, or at least so is Yao said. Or reports once you all get across. So we could go down. Well, what's farther this way? Does the path keep going? Yes, it does. In fact, a, in fact, a little a little down the path, you think you can see it appears to again split with one path going straight, which at this point is now more or less running perpendicular to the mountain, or it goes off to the right, which goes down the mountain. Uh, so that'd probably be where it connects to the ravine. Well, onward, I think. All right. Onwards and upwards. So at, so at the fork, I presume uh, you guys continue going straight. 
Yes. All right. As you head forward, you see that uh, there's a path down below you that comes up to join where you all, where you were. It seems that the previous path is just simply a, a down and up, you know, almost like a detour. And uh, making a quick DM decision at the moment. And the path continues onwards and upwards for quite a while without much of an issue. You're now thoroughly in the clouds at this point, and granted, you guys, you know, are nice and huddled together, but even within the sphere of warmth, you can feel the bite of cold just on the edges. And uh, you come across what appears to be the three-way split in the path. All right. Much like a left, straight, and right path. And you guys are in the middle of the clouds. You cannot see very far. And uh, my poor dear long, I must report, the weather is quite bad. Visibility is very poor, and the winds are quite fierce at this point. Don't fly. Yeah, that sounds like a bad idea. I mean, you can if you want to. I just, as a DM, I would recommend not doing it. Um, maybe we should I feel... think about setting up camp and waiting out the storm. Yeah, what time of day is it? How long have we been climbing? Um, you've probably been climbing for a few hours now. And it's probably, you know, I'll say it's maybe late afternoon, early evening, perhaps. Honestly, if we're going to camp at any point, now's as good a time as any, I think. Hmm. Um, I will see. Can we... Oh, okay. No, go. I was just asking if we could roast chestnuts on the heart of, heart of the mountain. Did you bring Does chestnuts? It? Is there enough space nearby to set up a tent? Well, I was going to... Is there anywhere that we could take shelter? Like, any rock formations? That, or... that would be a survival check, actually. I'm we'll supposed to be good at that. Let's see if I roll a two. All right. I can also roll that because I'm nope, a four. <laughs> well, you beat me. That's twice as good. Um, survival. Woo! Poppy wins again. Somebody save us! Thank you. Uh, there is no location in your immediate vicinity. That would be a good place to hunger down, considering the nature of the storm. So, the uh, lower checks were not able to locate a place. Poppy is able to determine trying to settle down anywhere near this junction is a bad idea. It will end bad. It will end poorly. Okay. How, how even, far with the, even with the heart of the mountain, it, the storm is just too bad. I don't. It, I think it some... might also it might also less be the storm and more like the wind knocking things around or potential avalanche or. Plus, the spot you're at is somewhat exposed, so it wouldn't be... There aren't, aren't really good secure places to be. So, you know, perhaps someone could wander in while you're sleeping. Mm. This After all, too. you have noticed you're not the only ones on this mountain, just the only ones on this particular way up. So, we take a chance on one of the other uh, directions, then. We don't have much of a choice but to keep going. Nope. We should just well, we left, left straight or right? I always go left. Left is best though. It's it's worked it's worked every other time for us so far. Well which you said you were going perpendicular to the mountain, right? Uh you were a while ago. Now you've been going you've been you slowly turned and now you are clearly going up the mountain. In fact, um I should have mentioned this. All three paths have begun sort of because uh, you were going perpendicular, shall we say, right, 2D map, 3D space. Uh, the path is turned so that you're not go going back the direction you came from, but you're still going up. 
all three paths are various degrees of going left. It's just there's one that is more left, one that is continuing to go straight in your current path that veers left, and then one that is right but still turning left all the same. <laughs> it's right, but it's still leftish. Yes. Well, well so we go, we go left no matter what. We can't lose. In this weather, we should probably take whatever looks like the safest path. Uh, that would be a perception or survival, I suppose. Alright. Oh boy. Oh boy. This is really cold. Hey. Someone got it. Is that perception or survival? Uh, oh. perception. I, either oh, or. Survival. Alright. Um. Nope. I got snow in my eyes. I can't roll anyway. Zio, yeah, you're pretty sure the best course of action is to go back uh, and to actually camp at the foot of the mountain. That's probably the best idea. This the foot sucks. of the mountain's probably that direction. Never mind the fact that you're pointing at the top of the mountain. <laughs> Genius. Um, Diambu, you can't see much. The storm is pretty intense. Yeah, we're just flying upside down. B and uh, Juno, not Vesper, Juno. I don't know how you could get them confused. Uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, uh, um, well, <laughs> unicorns are all the same. There's no difference. They all look the same to me. Oh, uh, no. Well, there may be some resemblance in this case, actually. <laughs> That's not the right way to spell racist. Okay, never mind then. <laughs> Just forget it. <laughs> I don't know how to spell it, but I know when it doesn't look right. <laughs> Anyways. Um, okay, that's how. And considering where to go, B and Juno, you think you can hear... You think you can hear voices on the wind. And this is not uh, all that uncommon for those who venerate the earth and all things therein. It is often for, it often speaks to its disciples and, you know, helps them as as need dictates. And in this case, it appears that you're getting two different ideas. And that is Straight will lead you to safety. Left will lead you to your goal. Uh, how high up the mountain are we now? Um, you're not sure. You've you've been you when you hit the cloud line, you sort of lost sense, which was a little while ago. You sort of lost sense exactly how high you are, so you're not exactly entirely sure where you are in the mountain. You're pretty uh, flipping high up, to be sure. How about this question? How high up the mountain, if we kind of roughly estimate based on the shape of the mountain, how high up the mountain do the clouds start? The clouds start in the upper third. Okay, so we're pretty close. So either take the safe way or try to push through. It's Do we, do we want to camp? I mean... Is, I think, the question. Because the safe... This, <laughs> The safe way won't get us where we need to go. It'll just be a place to hunker down for a bit. Yes, and then we get to where we need to go later. Yeah, then we circle back around, I assume. Oh, what'd you say, Typhal? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, the storm's pretty bad. Just try to get safety as soon as possible. There's no, there's no inherent rush. Yeah, um, there. Let's see. B, Poppy, do I, you have any opinions on the idea? I'm I'm clueless. I think we should wait out the storm. Oh, oh, on um, we're discussing this now. Oh, dumb. I I'd probably go to our goal, but mm, if we if we're all to if we all feel that it's best to wait this out, then I won't I won't say. 
dokonca ja to vám myslím. All right, so if I'm hearing correctly, the group consensus is to seek shelter? Sure. Yeah. Any objections? All right. Nope. That's a no. As the as group heads forward, the, the path... I mean, none of the paths are exactly easy to go, but ultimately speaking, this path ultimately leads into a cave that seems to cut straight into the mountain. And not, I mean, it's dark, but uh, those of you with special eyes who can see into the cave can Which... tell that can tell that it turns fairly quickly once you go in. Look with your special eyes. Does the group proceed into the cave? Sure. Yes. Do uh, who do long make it dark vision? I know unicorns I think, do. But... I think they do. I don't. I don't think long will get it. No, uh, get reindeer, it reindeer, and unicorn got it. Okay. I thought they got something. Maybe I'm wrong though. Well, I, I mean, you like, have flames like that pop out of your back, so <laughs> that's a form uh, of dark vision. So once you. First step into the cave, it's cold, of course, and bitter and unpleasant, but it, like I said, it, it turns, it takes a couple of turns, and quickly you are out of the wind. It's still freezing in here, but it's no longer actively, the weather's no longer actively pelting you and assaulting you. And it appears the cave just, it appears the cave continues on in whatever direction it's heading. I feel like we should scope out the cave before we uh, settle down. Maybe check a little bit deeper, yes. As long as it doesn't go too far. Well, the last, the last thing. We'll, oh yeah, somebody will have to stop. But the last thing we want is to settle down and something to try and come out of the cave. Will yes. uh, will he, will he be warm enough? We can warm up the space. We can, we can solve that. Mm. All right. Stay safe. The cave continues on for a surprising distance. And uh, you're not entirely sure when it's going to end. You've probably been going for close to an hour before you finally come, before you start hearing howling winds in the darkness, signifying that there's something. Well, you can people know that, oh, that means that there's an entrance nearby. Can we tell if we've been going higher or lower? Uh, if you're a dwarf, I'd tell. You, if you're a dwarf, I'd just give it to you. Um, uh, give me, give me a nature check, or I guess survival. Either or would be applicable here. I think. Can we all roll that? Or um, just B, since yeah. B's the one who I'm yeah, guessing was paying attention. Actually, I suppose it didn't really make sense. Anyways, uh, you can't tell immediately if, you, if you've been going up or down. It hasn't been really drastic one way or the other. I mean, it's weaved left and right a fair bit, but up and down, there's been no... Well, maybe a little... it's not obviously down. This is true. And as you arrive... To what appears to be another entrance, or perhaps exit, depending on your viewpoint. You notice the cave comes out on a completely different part of the mountain. And not too far from it is a cliff that just kind of plummets. Hmm. And no, well, no other features, think... just a cliff? I don't think anything is coming hang up behind us. No. Honestly, my concern was more something that would be living in the cave, and since we found nothing, and we've been through the whole cave, I think we're yep. good to uh, set up camp. So you guys are hunkering down for the night? Yep. Yeah. All right. Where are you guys hunkering down in the cave? Are you hunkering down near the entrances, somewhere in the middle? Well, preferably somewhere in the middle. 
Are there yeah. any little nooks or crannies to hide in? Well, it's clearly quite a long cave, so we can definitely find. Though that would probably be good, yeah. Nope. Nooks and crannies not specifically large enough, but there is a few some spots that you could like tuck yourself into without much, too much trouble. There's a convenient large, you know, like little entrance, big space kind of area. Is there enough space for a tent? Yes. Okay, good. Just string out a bunch of tents in a line. Could we start a fire? Um, if anyone has wood, I have tender. I. Well, we're in a, we're in a forest. Yeah. What effort we could. Uh... Well, no, no, we both have wood. You are not in a forest. You're past the tree line. And there wasn't any, really any trees in this mountain to begin oh, with. Okay. Uh, Poppy. That branch. Ahem. Poppy takes out her branch. Oh no. <laughs> if you want, if you really want to, <laughs> then I can. I can think of no better way. I'd I'd get rid of it. Well, if you don't mind, I mean, <laughs> I guess we don't really have much light here. Also, we have uh, we have, so we have too long. We, we have too long, and I can cast light. And I have a flask of oil. I also have torches, which uh, I recently learned from a video. The torches, which I recently learned from the video, the that the common use or depiction of torches is completely erroneous and incorrect. But that's beside the point. And it's probably not a good idea to have a bunch of smoke inside of it. Cave. That is yeah, that, that would also be my concern. Well, we'll go ahead and... Uh, I think we'll just have to make do with... Blankets, bedrolls, and body warmth. Yep. Oh. Everybody huddle up. Does, uh, does... Does, uh... Juno cast Druidcraft on... On Poppy to make this... To make her more cuddly? How how would Druidcraft help with that? It would make him smell less. Uh, that's not really a that I don't think that's a feature of Druidcraft. That's Preston's Yeah, it is. How could I think it is? How could, how could Poppy possibly be any more cuddly? It's true. But can it remove smells? Preston did you take uh, it? Well, it says you create a harmless sensory effect that predicts what the weather will be like next 24 hours. This effect persists for one round. <laughs> Make a flower blossom, a seed pot open, or a leaf bud bloom. If, if, I, were to a... if I were to pr predict the weather, would it just be snow? Uh, you create a harmless nature-related sensory effect. The effect must fit a five-foot cube. Or you, put, you light or put out a small flame. Well, yeah, but there still needs to be something to burn. If it's this to be a continual flame. But you can create a harmless nature related sensory effect, so you could fill the area with the scent of flowers. Now it smells like fish and flowers. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's diluted, it's fine. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, do you want to predict the weather for the next 24 hours? I mean, it wouldn't hurt. It would actually That's be just... pretty helpful. It, it would be useful to us. Very well. Um, clear skies. Both presently and future. Presently. Oh. Well then. Hmm. Yes, short storm then. Possibly. Wow. Well, At this that's, point, I'm that's one tired option. Enough. At this point, I'm already tired, so... Well, if it's yes, be, we, we be weren't... For the next 24 hours. Okay. We weren't I planning be, on continuing. I will be the fire. Alright, so you guys are hungering down for the night? Yep. Alright, uh, is there any RP anybody wants to do during this time? Huh? Is anyone going to be inside B's tent? Poppy will... <laughs> the smell I... drives you out. <laughs> Rude question mark? <laughs> Hang on, though. Can we actually afford to be in separate tents? 
Like, would that Did, even work in this situation? That is a fair question. I mean, as, as long as y'all, as long as you're all within the radius of the uh, the orb, you, or you're you have the cloak on yourself. Well, how big is this space that we're huddled up in? Ah. Uh... We'll say that it is about three squares wide and probably about two to three squares high, depending on exactly where in the cave you are. Sometimes it narrows down to two squares, so... So we can make a little, like, circle around the orb or something. So that does by the question, is it... Um... Zambi decided to uh, pop in the bee's tent at some point. No, oh, I, does. no I've heard stories. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, B, it appears that uh, Poppy has decided to pop into your tent at some point during the night. Surprise! She just kicks open the tent flap. <laughs> okay. Here's Poppy! <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> I just still don't light from inside her town. Um, what did you say? When you that is still that light going hey, on inside her tent. And <sighs> when you go inside, you see her cuddled up with the uh, a glowing spectral image of a large dog. It's oh. kind of like the claws from earlier, but just the whole dog. B. Who is this? B? Who is um, this? Um, this is my dog, Tess. Does he... Is he... Is he... What is he? Other than... You know... You mentioned you had a dog before. You don't have any more. Is this... Is this someone new? Or... No. This is that same dog. He's... Some part of him is still attached to me through this collar, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And he protects me. I see. You must have liked him very much, and must have liked you very much. Uh, she reaches out and tries to pat him on the head. Is your, is your spectral companion corporeal? No. <laughs> Spectral and corporeal. There, sorry, I interrupted you. Uh, continue. Hmm. It appears your hoof passes through its head. Could I? Is this? Could I speak with this dog? you would allow me? Um, sure. I, uh, ten minutes later, <laughs> and speak, speak with Animals has been cast. And, uh, she, oh, too bad she's been cast Speak with Dead. Oh, no. Does it does it work? Give me a nature or religion check, please. I think my 
I think they're both plus three, yeah. Going with religion. Lap. You would be able to under normal circumstances, but given its more spectral nature, you have to tap into a slightly different source of magic to do so. Essentially, being able to speak to her canine companion would be a two-step process. Hmm. Unfortunate. She seems to be past what I what I can reach with my magic. What he does. He did care about me a lot. This is well. He ended up this way from protecting me. Mm-hmm. Saving me, really. Well, that's what, that's what animals can do with us. We're not... We're, when you really think about it, animals and ungulates, we aren't so different, you know? We both can learn from each other. We both can grow stronger from each other. It's something that's always resonated me with with Juno's teaching. I wish he was still fully with me, but having this is worth all of the troubles I have to do to keep him around. Don't mind if I sleep here tonight, baby. No. I'm not used to the cold out here. It's foreign to me. I don't think any of us are used to a cold like this. Well, it was good talking to you. She, uh, she yawns and tries to, and curls up in the corner. And as you do so, B, you feel a little extra warmth coming from your spectral companion. And the night passes without much incident. So fairly calm and cold, but uneventful night. And before I move on to the morning, is there anything anybody else wants to do? that I can think of. No, we need to pad out the scene for an, <laughs> for seven hours. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Then in that case, we'll go ahead. So who else has tra- tragic revelations? Uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the morning then. You might want to stop that and like clear out the clear out the queue so it doesn't loop back into seven hours of Well it's it's looping it's looping the track specifically. Mm. So it should be it should be fine. If we start getting emotional piano in about what is it, four or seven minutes, something like that, then uh four. <laughs> well But in any case. Cross the um, yes, the morning comes it is cold, it is unpleasant. Well, and you're all probably a little stiff. But uh, you nothing attacked you in the dead of the night, which is a good thing. It's a good thing. Oh, if it wasn't clear, um, 
you guys have undergone a full rest prior to this point, and this would be a full rest anyway, so... Well, we haven't really used any resources, so... I know, I just... <laughs> I, I just look, figured, I just figured I in case someone friend. forgot... In case someone forgot to, like, update their sheet or they weren't 100% clear, essentially go ahead and put yourselves back to full everything. If there's anything docked from the previous session still. Right, so, uh... We're all awoken, and uh, it's a fine, cold morning inside of a dark cave. It's a beautiful day. Indeed. So, where are you guys going? Up. Well, out first, and then up, probably. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> Start drilling. As you... I'll never expect it. <laughs> this is true. You never As expect you, the uh... mole, man. The mole cows. <laughs> There is no escaping from the mole cows. The lair of the mole cows. Unfortunately, we have no cows in the party. This is unfortunate indeed. But as you guys head out of the cave, you discover the weather has actually gotten worse. And instead of just snow, apparently now there is sleet and hail pounding down around. The, well. the party was buffeted by hail. And the, the what was an already difficult path to find has become more so. Thankfully, the high winds are sort of helping in that it's making it difficult for things to settle, but it's kind of a two-edged sword, you know, whipping winds with hail isn't exactly a fun experience. No. Someone needs to switch out their Obama snow. So, uh... Alright, so you guys head back to the three-way split, and I presume you go the Direction that will, quote, get you to your goal, yes? Yes. Yeah. Alright. The rest of the the rest of the way is very difficult, not going to lie. In fact, the the heart of the mountain actually is melting the snow as you make your way through. At least if it's close enough. Probably and high with pride. And uh even at the edges of its warmth, the cold is a bit too intense. But after quite a bit of effort to get to press on as the trail curves back towards the direction you were coming from and then snakes again, but always going up, up, and up. Finally, at last, long last, you break above the clouds. And... It's pretty awesome, the view from up here. Well, I mean... Okay. Well, can we see anything through the, through the snow? Well, if we get above the clouds, we won't have to worry about the snow. This is true. As you get above it, two things strike, your, two things strike you. One is the, the sun is quite beautiful. Second, the storm is right where you guys were. There's not a single cloud otherwise in the sky. You can see just beyond the edge of it for miles or, or kilometers, however metric you want to use. So wait, hang on, is it centered on the was it centered on the mountain or was it centered specifically on where we were? Essentially it was a relatively small cloud directly where you guys were. I was afraid that might have been what was going on when we And you can tell that you can tell that it's trying to inch its way up the mountain towards you guys, but it just can't seem to get any higher. Well Can I make a nature check to see if it's a natural occurrence? You made use of it with advantage this time. I'm pretty sure it's not natural. Yes, I... That's why I'm making the <laughs> Does check. This, uh... Does this beat out my, uh, my disadvantage with just regular? Yes. Advantage sure helped. You, you didn't roll two. That is also true. Oh, good thing. Hey, she's still, she's hey. still learning. <laughs> that's snow. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's <laughs> really cool. Cloud. That's a cool cloud. I didn't know. Na I didn't know nature worked like that. That's so cool. Water freezes. Like, uh, 
It's very fluffy. It's like, <laughs> it's like in friendship, it's witchcraft. It goes like, Clow! Clow! Uh, you know what? Who knew Cloud could be so angry? Oof. Angry Cloud. Uh, yeah. Cloud There's some powerful magic going on. I, I tell, uh, I tell, uh, do you know, does, does nature really work like that? Like magic? <laughs> so, how? Technically speaking, Poppy's question isn't wrong because you realize what you're looking at is fey magic. Hmm. Yes, you are seeing a black box. It, everything is black at the moment. Okay, I thought that was just me. Nope, nope, everything's blacked out on purpose. Yes, it's theater of the mind presently. Okay, just wanted to be sure. Okay. Yes, no problem. Close, close your eyes. Working as intended. <laughs> Shine your eyes. Shine your eyes. No, close your eyes. Shine your eyes. The opposite. No, so, uh... I don't know, what have you done? So, yes, like there's... Fun. You can sense powerful fey magic controlling this cloud. In fact, you sense... Just a little bit of lingering fey magic on Dianbu. What? <gasps> Traitor! <gasps> you cast the spell! <laughs> <laughs> it's not very strong. Uh, it was me all along. But you do, there is, there is a faint trace of it. <laughs> I told you, you out just, of character to look, not touch. <laughs> you just had to go poke the thing, didn't you? That puts a thing, am I right? Gosh. It's a, it's a D&D story of old comes into my mind. But another time. Don't don't poke the thing. I poked the thing. That's I'm gonna pretty do much it. what it is. A tragedy in two parts. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, that is what your nature's check tells you. And then the question begs, is there anything particularly you want to say or do about it, or shall we press on? Uh, well, I think it's fairly obvious to the party that it wasn't a natural occurrence. So I don't think I need to point that out. Let's attack the cloud. And so Poppy will forever, forever think that this is all natural. <laughs> all natural? I mean... Bay magic is technically natural, so... This is just how snow works. <laughs> snow oh, goes up. No, I'm pretty sure snow works like 14-hour days. Oh, no. But a... Yeah, oh. but he's Canadian, oh. so... <laughs> Alright, so, uh... Pressing on, then? Yes, what else do we see up here other than a storm below us and a sun? Give me a couple perception checks. Mm. Or, give me perception checks, everyone, since we're here. Right. Galarian, make a perception check. Not you, Galarian. <laughs> hey, there is a cow in the party. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> That's not how you do it. <laughs> I'm not I, sure what happened there. I'm looking at the storm still. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It is, uh... Perception and survival are my okay. highest skills. And I don't <laughs> think I've rolled above, like, a four. Like, is It's this... okay, I'll roll two one. Is this I'll storm... Roll 20. <laughs> is this storm an affront to nature? Or is this a manifestation of nature? Hmm. What... It... Now, this would be interesting to discuss with other druids. This would be a philosophical question and a half. Now, you only have the half druid instead. Yeah, it doesn't count. Um, right. So, uh, it appears we've lost someone for a hot second. Uh oh. No, no he flew back into the storm. <laughs> no, Diabu! No! No! I thorn whip him back out. I, uh, I vine whip him back out. Oh no. I'm gonna grab a quick drink. I'll be right back. 
It's a tangled in root lines. I'm, uh, I'm a good exception <laughs> to go to the bathroom. I will also be right back. Oh, okay. I guess it's break time. <laughs>